Wow, that was awesome. Hi, I'm Chef Anthony Snow, and this is The Awesome Chef. What we do here in The Awesome Chef is we show you how to blend a lot of different cultures and flavors together in a style we call fusion. In fact, fusion is one of the newest forms of cooking all around the world, and it's beginning to get more and more popular all over the place. What I'm here to do is show you some pretty awesome fusion techniques that you can use for a lot of different varieties of food. Now, I've mastered in cooking Indian, Chinese, American, and Italian cuisine, as well as Mexican or Hispanic cuisine. And what I like to do is I like to fuse all of those flavors together. And various dishes, you can get some awesome combinations that will work well with you, not just if you were cooking in a professional restaurant, but also for the average person at home. Now you can have truly wonderful, awe-inspiring meals right there in your kitchen. And I'm here to show you how. So today what we're going to be doing, we're going to cook our Creole cook-up rice along with our barbecue tandoor style chicken. And that's an American and an Indian, authentic Indian fusion right there from tandoori chicken and your favorite, you know, barbecue chicken. All right, so after these messages from our sponsors, we'll be right back and I'll start showing you how to do this. Thank you. Enter Ariel's Easy Wash promotion and get a chance to win a grand top loader GE washer. Eight washers, eight winners. Buy any Ariel soap powder and enter to be a winner. Just drop off any Ariel packet along with your name, address, and contact number at participating supermarkets and vendors countrywide to enter the Ariel's Easy Wash promotion. You can be a lucky winner of a grand top loader GE washer. Eight washers, eight winners. Ariel, making wash easier. Promotion ends March 7. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our chicken. I've taken a six pound chicken, I've quartered it into different sections, washed chicken after you wash it. Make sure you do both sides thoroughly. I'm just going to go ahead and pat dry the rest of this in a minute. Now that our chicken has been patted dry, remember you can use a piece of bounty, it works just fine and it's strong enough to actually absorb and reuse so you don't have to keep using a lot of paper towels. Alright, take your knife. Now we want to make sure that this chicken is going to cook fast. We cannot allow the chicken to stay too long on the grill because it's going to burn. So, by the joints of the chicken you're going to make some incisions. These are normally the thicker parts of the chicken that take longer to cook. Just like this here. When you do this now, the thicker parts get to cook very fast. So what I'm doing, I'm making some incisions so that my chicken can cook quick all the way through. This will also allow smoke and flavor to set in on your meat so that when you actually bite into your piece of chicken, you have flavor from the top all the way through, which is a problem a lot of people have when they're making barbecue. I'm just prepping the chicken right now. I should probably use a smaller knife. There we go. Something a little sharp. Right here, by this area of the chicken leg, use your knife and cut around it. This will allow the meat to pull in when it's cooking around this area and it will actually pull up like a little drumstick, or look, look, almost like you're doing a lollipop chicken. And it'll keep the flavor and the juices from escaping in the cooking process. This chicken will be cooked on an outdoor grill as opposed to being cooked in a tandoor. Then you make your little incisions. Nice slits. Like I said, this will allow flavor to set in and it'll also give your chicken a nice presentation when it's done. When you're done preparing your leg quarter, it should look like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue to do this with the rest of the chicken. And when we come back, I'll show you how to season it up. We don't just wear clothes. We live life in them.
clothes newer, 50% longer with downy softness. Welcome back. And for those of you who just tuned in, you're watching The Awesome Chef. I'm going to continue where I left off, and I'm about to season up our barbecue style tandoor chicken. The first thing we need to do is we're going to take some paprika, about a tablespoon, sprinkle it all over the edge, about a tablespoon. This is going to help give it the color that you're looking for. We're going to take a tablespoon of garlic powder, fine garlic powder, very fine garlic powder. Only about a tablespoon. Now, we're going to add about a tablespoon of parsley. Not too much. And this is dried parsley. You could use fresh parsley if it is available to you. It was just more convenient to use dried parsley for me. Going to use a tablespoon of rosemary. Now, if you're not good with averaging, then go ahead and bust out your measuring spoons and do it. If you have a little experience in the kitchen, you can wait because you know what a tablespoon looks like. We're going to use a teaspoon and a half of mustard powder. Very important. you don't have mustard powder, you could use actual mustard and you'll use about two teaspoons of actual mustard. This flavor will be slightly different, but it'll be very close to what it should be. We're going to use a tablespoon of cayenne pepper. Sprinkle it on. We're going to use about a teaspoon of turmeric. And this is very important because it's an authentic Indian dish that we're fusing with an American dish. So you must have all the right spices. Because one thing we know about authentic Indian food, the spices really make the dish. We're going to use a tablespoon of chili powder. We're going to use a teaspoon of basil. And this is dry basil. All these ingredients that I'm using are dry ingredients because they actually help to draw in the flavors to the meat properly. It's almost like you're doing a dry barbecue rub. We're also going to use white pepper. About a tablespoon, give or take. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice there's a lot of different seasonings here. But this is very important to the rub for the barbecue and to also get the tandoor flavor in. Next, we're going to actually season with some all-purpose seasoning. Now this is a season I like to use. You can use whatever is available to you. And for me, I'm going to put about two tablespoons of all-purpose seasoning. Going to use some black pepper. About a teaspoon of black pepper. We're going to use some extremely hot pepper sauce. Now, this is a pepper sauce I actually make just to use in my personal cooking. But if it's if you don't want something so hot, you can actually choose what you prefer. But do remember that tandoori chicken is a spicy meal. And I'm going to use maybe about three, three tablespoons of this hot pepper. 
I like my spice. I like my taste very hot. Now, for those of you who don't, that's understandable. And we're going to add some salt now. Remember, all the seasonings that you use basically have its own salty flavor to it. This is why we add salt last. So what I'm doing, I'm going to use maybe about a teaspoon of salt. This is a six pound chicken by the way. Now, the dirty part, you have to mix it up and rub in everything. So, you want the seasonings to be rubbed all over the meat so that it can get into the slices and the incisions that we've made already. Now, when making tandoori chicken, you notice that they use garlic paste and ginger paste. But, for the barbecue tandoor style chicken that I'm doing, we're not going to use ginger paste or garlic paste, but we will use about a tablespoon of fresh grated ginger and about a tablespoon and a half of fresh grated garlic. Even though we already have garlic powder. This is going to add a very nice roasted garlic and roasted ginger taste to the, your chicken when it's on the grill and also give it an awesome smell. And we're going to let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes and then it'll be ready to cook. In the meantime, after I put this aside, we can actually start cooking our side dish, which we will be using with our chicken, which is a vegetarian cook-up, Creole cook-up, Guyanese style. Right? Let me just put this aside. I love my dishwashing liquid, you know. It actually doesn't just cut grease, but like if you have spices on your hands, it can help remove everything and still keep your hands nice and moist and soft. So whenever you guys go to the supermarket, make sure you pick up a bottle of Ultra Game. It works very well. Tired of being greeted by annoying odors? It's time to eliminate those awful odors and freshen the air with Febreze Air Effects. And as for those fabrics that can't be washed, well, there's Febreze Fabric Refresher. Keeps your fabric fresh and odor free. Febreze Air Effects and Fabric Refresher are both available in a variety of refreshing scents to choose from. Febreze, refresh it up. Available at supermarkets and stores countrywide. few ingredients we're going to need for the cook-up and we're going to have it. We're going to use a little bit of garlic powder, some salt. Inside this glass here, I have a few different fresh seasonings that I have blended already. I, I did this before to show. Um, we have celery, scallions, or shello as they know it in Guyana. And we also have a spice called Mariman Po. Right? Uh, some people think that it's actually called basil, but it is not. Marimar po and basil are two completely different spices. So please keep that in mind if you go to the store and you buy basil to substitute. You will not get the same flavor. So make sure you find exactly what you're looking for. I have here about a cup of carrots, sliced up, diced, fresh, very good. I have one large onion and I also have three cloves of garlic just diced up, chipped up. I love carrots. Very fine. Mm. I really like carrots. In this bowl here, I have kidney beans and I also have chickpeas. And this is about 32 ounces of kidney beans and 16 ounces of chickpeas. And we're gonna need this for the cook-up. I also have two and a half cups of white rice, ready to cook, long grain. Oh, 
before I forget. Another main ingredient to a Creole cook-up, an official cook-up, is coconut milk. I have here about 32 ounces or a quart of coconut milk. Enter Ariel's Easy Wash promotion and get a chance to win a grand top loader GE washer. Eight washers, eight winners. Buy any Ariel soap powder and enter to be a winner. Just drop off any Ariel packet along with your name, address, and contact number at participating supermarkets and vendors countrywide to enter the Ariel's Easy Wash promotion. You can be a lucky winner of a grand top loader GE washer. Eight washers, eight winners. Ariel, making wash easier. Promotion ends March 7. Welcome back, and I'm going to pick up where we left off. We actually have our pot now on the fire, and we are making our Guyanese Creole cook-up with no oil. First thing we're going to do, we're going to throw in some of our fresh ingredients because we want these to cook fast. Throw in the onion. You can throw in your carrots and everything one time. Your onion, your carrots, and your garlic. That was one whole onion, three flakes of garlic, and about a cup of carrots diced up. Next, we're going to throw in our beans. We have red kidney beans and we also have chickpeas. If you get them in the can, you can use the liquid that comes with them as well. My fire is on high heat. So as you throw your stuff in, make sure you give it a little stir. Next, start adding your seasonings. I'm a fan of paprika, so I'm just going to add a quarter of a teaspoon, actually you know what, half of a teaspoon of paprika. I'm going to use a teaspoon of garlic powder. Our fresh seasoning, which is our Mary Manful, our celery, and our shallot or scallions as most people will know. I'm going to use about two tablespoons of this because it will really help infuse the flavor into the rice when we put it in. We have here something called Chinese sauce. You can find it at your grocery store and we're going to put in maybe about an ounce to two ounces depending on how dark you want or how much color you want in your rice. I have here what we call wuri peppers in Guyana. I have a couple of them. They're very hot even though they're small. I just really like the flavor that it gives our food when they boil down in the rice. I'm going to put five whole peppers in Then we're going to add the rice in so that the flavor from all the seasonings can mix in with the rice and it can just lightly fry slightly inside the pot with the beans. Start to really draw in some of that flavor and that color before we put the coconut milk in and any water. also have not added salt yet because the ingredients that we add in do have salt. Now the coconut milk. This is uh, coconut milk from a can. You can also grate the dry coconut and extract the milk from it. But this is coconut milk from the can. And I'm using approximately 32 ounces of coconut milk. And you always add your coconut milk before you add your water. Mixing everything up. Now if you want, you can close it down like this and steam out your rice. But I like to add some salt before I do that and also some black pepper. And a little bit of water. So, first I'm going to add my salt. I'm actually going to add a 
about a tablespoon. Not, actually, let's say two teaspoons of salt. I don't want it too salty. And I say, if you're not good with averaging, please use your measuring spoon. They will save you. Some black pepper. About a teaspoon of black pepper. Substitutes for certain ingredients that you don't find locally in your supermarket, we will actually have a list of those online at our website. Or you can also go to markchan.com to find out some more of our recipes. Now we will add our water. I'm adding about a, a cup and three quarters of another cup. So one and three quarters of a cup of water is what I add. I'll give it one more stir. And just close this down and let this pressure out for about 15 minutes. Then check it. Providing that your rice is cooked, your carrots are cooked, then your meal is ready. If you want it a little drier, you can leave it a little longer with the top off and just let it dry down so you can have more of a loose rice. But if you're like me and you like it kind of wet and sticky, then turn it off once you see everything is cooked inside and you'll still have the creamy juice from the coconut milk saturating your rice and it's going to be an awesome side dish to go with your barbecue tandoor style chicken. At this point, we come back to our chicken, which has been set in our, uh, in our rub and marinating there for about 15 to 20 minutes. And our chicken is actually ready to go on the grill and cook. So we're going to go ahead and set up our grill. And as we get back, we will be outside cooking. Clean and freshen your surroundings at once with Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean Multi-Surfaces Liquid Cleaner cuts grease, removes grime, and leaves a great fresh scent as you go. Available with Febreze Freshness, Lavender with Gain Scent, and Antibacterial to clean and disinfect. Mr. Clean Multi-Surfaces Liquid Cleaner for a quick clean and refreshing scent. Available at supermarkets and stores countrywide. Okay, we're now in the yard. We've got our barbecue grill prepped. The coals are getting nice and hot. Now, it's important that you keep different sections on your grill. You'll have a hot section in the middle, very hot section, and you'll have some warmer sections to the outside of the grill. For the first stage of cooking, you need to put it on the warmer sections and not directly over the hottest part. This way, smoke is allowed and steam is also allowed to get into the chicken through the sl slits that we put into it. Remember, your chicken already has olive oil on it, so you don't need to go and oil your grill or anything. Make sure your grill nice and hot. Got drop them down there. You can put the side with the slices and the thickest parts of the meat. You can put that on down, side down. And at this point in time. Just cool, cool the middle of your fire down slightly if it's too hot. A little water, a little spray nozzle. And also spray around the sides of your grill because you want to generate steam. This steam that you're generating is going to help make sure that your chicken does not dry out. And you'll have to do this a couple times during the cooking, so be ready for it. Now, we're going to let this cook. This is going to cook about 15 minutes. During the 15 minutes cooking, we're going to check it a few times. We're also going to cover it down to allow the smoke to build up. Since the fire is nice and high, we can actually afford to close it down so that the smoke gets into the meat. Please make sure there's a little opening. 
few minutes, we'll check it back. All right. Enter Ariel's Easy Wash promotion and get a chance to win a grand top loader GE washer. Eight washers, eight winners. Buy any Ariel soap powder and enter to be a winner. Just drop off any Ariel packet along with your name, address, and contact number at participating supermarkets and vendors countrywide to enter the Ariel's Easy Wash promotion. You can be a lucky winner of a grand top loader GE washer. Eight washers, eight winners. Ariel, making wash easier. Promotion ends March seven. Yes, and we've been cooking for approximately five minutes so far. As you can see, there's a lot of smoke coming out of our grill, and this is very important so that we can get the smoke into the chicken. Let's see what's going on under here. It's looking good. Remember, this is only after five minutes. At this point in time, you can go ahead and start turning some of your chicken and moving it toward the harder parts of the grill. If your flame is getting too hot, tone it down. Make sure that I'm not burning my chicken. And you can just sprinkle a little water on top of your chicken. Not much, just a little bit because you want to make sure it doesn't dry out. And if you look at the breast meat, if I only grab this and pull too hard, it will completely come off of the bone. Just to let you know that your meat is very soft, tender, and juicy. Perfect. Things nice and juicy. You can use the same slits that you have in the chicken now to check to see how well it's cooked. Once you don't see any pink inside the meat, I'm trying to do it because of all the smoke, then you know your chicken is almost perfectly cooked. Remember, the leg and the thigh area will take a slightly longer. So, just make sure you focus on that. But as you see, pieces of the meat already start falling off of the bone. I'm going to go ahead and sample this little piece. Awesome. Remember, so far, this has been cooking for approximately 10 to 13 minutes. And at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start doing the final stage of the cooking, which is basting it with our barbecue sauce that we made. When basting, be generous, get into all of the grooves. And remember, because of the sauce, we made it thin, it can actually soak into the meat properly. Do take caution because the fire is very hot. After you've basted the first side, you're going to also cover it down once again for about 60 seconds a minute and allow the smoke now to push the flavors and the juices from the sauce a little bit deeper into the meat. And this you're only keeping close for about a minute. So, after that minute, take it off, flip your chicken, and repeat the process. And then your chicken should be done. If it's not done at that moment, just leave it on for a few more minutes. And as soon as your chicken is cooked all the way through, which you can easily see, just by spreading the meat open slightly, take it off the grill, let it set about 10 minutes so that the juices settle, put it on your plate, serve, and enjoy your meal. Okay, now as we check it, this chicken is almost perfectly done. Give it its last flip and we'll just baste it one more time just to keep it nice and juicy. And then the next time you see us, this chicken will actually be off the fire and on our plate ready to eat. So I'll see you back in a few moments. Yes, and as you can see, 
We are back here in our kitchen. Our Creole cook-up rice has been completed and plated along with our barbecue tandoor style chicken. Succulent, juicy, and a very healthy choice. If you like spices, this is also a choice for you. So I hope that you stay tuned for our next few episodes. We have a lot of wonderful meals that can truly make an impression at any function or event, or even just your simple dinner. Why have dinner simple? when it can be awesome in the same amount of time. So I hope you stay tuned to our next episodes. This is Chef Anthony Snow, and this is The Awesome Chef. Take care, and enjoy eating. Bye.